Hey everyone and welcome to this video where we're going to talk about the trends in electronegativity. Now most of you will remember electronegativity from last year when we talked about it with respect to polarity of bonds. However, in many cases I know that students don't really understand electronegativity. So we're going to talk about the definition of it, the factors that influence it, and the trends. Okay, so the definition of electronegativity is the tendency of an atom in a covalent bond to attract a bonding or shared pair of electrons. Okay, so there's several things here. There's the fact that you've got a shared pair of electrons, and it's the attraction for that shared pair of electrons that we're talking about. So atoms that don't form covalent bonds will not have electronegativity. Having said that, just about everything can be forced to form covalent bonds. So the trend is that electronegativity increases from left to right across a period, except for the noble gases. They do not form covalent bonds, so they do not have electronegativities. And it decreases from top to bottom as you go down a group. So if we have a look, this periodic table shows the electronegativity values for different atoms. And it's really a comparative standard. Now the only exception is hydrogen, which if you can visually picture hydrogen as sitting somewhere over near carbon, when we're thinking of electronegativity, that is a good place for it. Okay, so if you look across from left to right, lithium to fluorine, you'll see that that electronegativity increases. If you go down from top to bottom, from fluorine to iodine, you can see that it decreases along that path. Um, this particular one is color-coded, where the different shades of red are the electrons or atoms that co commonly form covalent bonds and covalent molecules. The other ones are not usually found in covalent bonds, but sometimes. Particular transition metals, if you think about um, some of the um, transition metal ions and compounds, they, they may. Okay, so electronegativity, what are the factors that influence it? Well, if we go back to that definition, and the definition is it is the tendency of an atom in a covalent bond to attract a shared pair of electrons. We need to understand first off that in a covalent bond, those shared electrons are going into the vacant, usually p orbitals. Okay, so they're still filling up those empty shells, if you will. So that's where the electrons are going. And so the attraction for those electrons is going to be dependent on two things, just like everything else we've talked about. How far away are those electrons from the nucleus? And how many protons are there in the nucleus to attract those valence electrons? And it all comes back to those two things. If this seems very much like atomic radius or ionization energy, this is for a reason. Because these trends are all based on the same two key ideas. How far away or how many electron shells are there? Therefore, how far away are the valence electrons from the nucleus? And what is the attraction between those valence electrons and the protons in the nucleus? Okay, so if we consider those trends in slightly more detail, as we go from left to right across a period, the electronegativity increases up until the noble gases, which don't have electronegativity values. And so what's happening is that the valence electrons and the empty orbitals are going to stay in the same, same energy level. So when we put in those shared electrons, they're going to go into the same energy shell, the same orbital, as the current valence electrons. But... As we increase, then go from left to right across the period, the number of protons is increasing. So if we go from lithium to fluorine, we're going from having three protons in the nucleus to having seven, nine protons in the nucleus. Our valence electrons are still in the second energy shell. Whether we're looking at lithium, whether we're looking at fluorine, those valence electrons are in the same energy shell. But the attraction from three protons and the attraction from nine protons is significantly different. So in our fluorine atom, there's going to be a much greater attraction between those valence electrons in the nucleus than there is in our lithium atom. The, um, the shared electrons are going to go into those valence 
shells, the empty valence shells. So the attraction between those valence electrons, those shared electrons, and the nucleus is going to be significantly greater for an atom like fluorine compared to an atom like lithium. Okay, as we go down a group, so if we consider we're going from fluorine to chlorine to bromine to iodine, the number of protons in the nucleus is increasing significantly. We're going from 9 protons for fluorine to 17 for chlorine to 35 for bromine to, I think it's 55 for iodine, something like that. But what's happening is we're also putting on extra shells of electrons. So we're going from the second p orbital to the third p orbital, the fourth p orbital to the five p orbital. And they're getting further and further and further away from the nucleus. So the attraction between those valence electrons and the nucleus is going to decrease. And that is why electronegativity increases as we go from left to right across the periodic table and um, decreases as you go from top to bottom. And it's an inverse relationship with atomic radius. So as the atomic radius gets smaller, the electronegativity will get higher because those shared valence electrons are going to be closer to the nucleus. Now, that's the reason... That's the trend. For those of you that want to step a bit further on, my next slide is going to explain this in terms of physics and maths. It is not accessible. But if you really want to understand this, this is where you need to think of. Okay, so this is all about Coulomb's law. And if you take level 3 physics, Coulomb's law may be reasonably familiar. And Coulomb's law is talking about the force of attraction between two charged particles. In this case, the nucleus and the valence electrons. And so we've got a constant, but Q1 and Q2 are the electrostatic charges, and R is the radius. You'll see that it's divided by R squared. What that means is as the radius increases, the force decreases significantly, and it's an inverse square relationship, which means if the distance doubles, the force is a quarter. If the distance trebles, the force is a ninth. Okay? So that relationship becomes really, really important. So that distance thing is more important than the number of protons in the nucleus in most cases. Again, um, yeah, that, that's all that really matters. The distance is the most important thing. It's more important than the number of protons in the nucleus. So just remember that. All right. My final video on the series on periodic trends will be on ionization energy, so do check in and have a look at that one.